2 Corinthians chapter 12, begin reading at verse number 7. And the Bible reads, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of sharing, asking that as you've already been in control, that the power of the Holy Ghost would continue to be in control. You said that it's not by power nor by might, but that it is only by your spirit. We give you the right of way that no flesh would glory in your presence, but God, that you would get the glory out of the services today. Broken hearts would be mended, minds regulated, every crooked path made straight, every valley exalted by the power of God. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for restoration that is in the house on this morning. We give you praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and every heart and mind says, Amen. If I would have a thought for this morning, my thought would be twofold. My first thought would be what to do when God says no. And my second thought would be you are stronger than what you think. Our text this morning is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Most theologians seem to suggest and believe that it was penned by none other than the Honorable Apostle Paul, who in my opinion is one of the greatest apostles to ever live. If you study the life of the Apostle Paul, he was one that God chose that would not have been picked by the church. If it was left up to the church, the Apostle Paul never would have gotten saved. Because of the life he lived, because of his character, because he was one that persecuted the church. And the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 8 that there was a preaching deacon by the name of Stephen. And Stephen preached so with so much clarity and wisdom to the Bible said that they looked to put their fingers in their ears. But that deacon, Stephen, the first martyr, the first Christian to die for his faith after he was stoned, the Bible said that they would take their clothes and took the clothes and laid it at the feet of this man by the name of Saul at the time later on will become the apostle paul one chapter later in acts chapter 9 he's on his way to damascus to bring more havoc to the church persecuting christians going into their homes hailing them off to jail and killing some but on his way going to damascus the bible says that there was a light that shined about him and around the men that were with him that shined brighter than the noonday sun it would be this light that the Apostle Paul would see and God would begin to speak through that light and tell Paul that you are chosen vessel to me and you must suffer many things for my name. It would be this Apostle Paul who would start his missionary journey, study at the feet of a man by the name of Gamiel. He stays in Damascus for three years and he starts his missionary journey and he begins to preach the gospel. This Apostle Paul who's going to be the greatest apostle or one of the greatest apostles ever live. He was a man that not only established churches, but he lived what he preached. Two different occasions, he would go and encounter people that were um, invaded by a spirit or unclean spirit. And he would speak to the unclean spirit, showing that he not only had power to preach, but he had power to cast the devil out. If there's anything that you and I can gain from the Apostle Paul life is that the church still has power. We can get so accustomed to dancing and shouting over the material until we forget that when you receive Christ, he imparts to you and I spiritual power and authority. 
And you and I as believers, we must not be afraid nor ashamed to look situations in their eyes and speak life even in the midst of death. We must not be afraid to walk in that spiritual authority that can only come through Christ. But it would be this Apostle Paul that as God would use him to establish churches, he establishes a church down in Corinth. It would be this Corinthian church that was a problematic church. Corinthian church, I, I don't know if it was a bunch of hood folk in there, a bunch of black folk in there. I just know he had a whole lot of trouble out of them Corinthian folk. Corinthian folk, they, they, they were the China church. They wouldn't give you no money. They weren't going to give you no offering. This, this, this Corinthian church, they, they, they were sleeping with folk. They were still drinking while they was in church. This Corinthian folk, I believe they were getting high in the parking lot. I'm talking about this Corinthian church. So Paul picks up his pen and he began to write the first letter to the Corinthian church and begin to tell them that, listen, uh, they that do these things, you will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God. He begins to warn them. And after Paul sends the first letter to warn them, it says that historians believe uh, that he begins to pen a second letter. And it's the second letter that we find ourselves here in 2 Corinthians that Paul would begin to write this on his second missionary journey. And as he began to pen this letter, the second letter of Corinthians, he would let them know that, listen, I'm writing because I have some folks, some agnostics that are contending with what I preach. He had established a church and he had left that church. And as he left that church, people crept in preaching another gospel. And so Paul is writing this letter back to the Corinthian church to reassure them that he has the real thing. It is here that we find that the apostle Paul, just like in churches of old, even our churches of today, that we will face opposition. We will face those that will not believe in Christ the way that we believe. It is a good indicator just to throw the name of Jesus out there to some of your friends. I found out that folk don't have a problem with you mentioning God. They don't have, you can mention God all day long. You can go to the graduation and say God all day long and you will not offend anybody because half of the people believe that there is a God somewhere or in some type of God. You got a few atheists that's still hanging around but whenever you start talking about that name Jesus baby, you're going to have some problem problems you're going to have opposition because everybody and the most people believe in a universal God they believe in a sky God but when I say that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh and that there is no salvation apart from him baby you're gonna start losing some friends you want to find out if your friends are real friends and not tell them how you feel about Jesus Jesus name has always been a separator you remember in the book of Acts when Peter then began to start churches and preach the gospel after the Holy Ghost fell and Acts chapter 2 it would be Peter that would begin to preach and tell them that there is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus they arrest Peter them and they they take them to jail and they beat them and they tell them you can no longer preach in that name what am I saying to you that baby the name of Jesus ain't just start being a problem it was a problem over 2,000 years ago that's why when you grab and you call on the name you got to call on the name in faith because the name still has power you have to forgive me I I've been in church all my life so I still believe in old school church I still believe that there are sometimes you have to get on your knees and just call on his name I, I ain't want to ask you for nothing Lord I just want to call on your name because it is in that name that every knee will bow every tongue must confess that he is Lord of Lords Kings of Kings you can bow now or bow later but sooner or later your knees got to bow at that name the devil don't even respect nothing else but that name you can come to the enemy and say God God all day long and the devil will not move but the minute you start talking about yo the minute you start mentioning Jesus baby you you got you something you got something that the enemy respects you remember when Jesus was here he came up on a boy from the complex and the Bible says that he had devils in him and when the enemy began to speak back to Jesus he said that my name is legion simply means that there are thousands of devils in this one body but it was over a thousand devils in one man but it was only one Jesus and the thousands of devils had enough respect to say listen don't cast me out before time do we have permission just to go down to the pigs do we have permission because there were power in that name it's the apostle Paul as we have opposition in the church he begins to pin this letter he begins to encourage the Corinthian saints he tells them in that first chapter he says for all of the promises of God in him that they are yes and amen he encourages them that the same God that I've been preaching to you about is the same God that's not just a promise maker but he is a promise keeper I found out a lot of folk can make promises, everybody just can't keep them. And so God, he's saying that I'm not just a promise maker, but I am a promise 
keeper. Man can make you a promise and mean exactly what he says, but because man is limited, he can run into complications. But I'm so thankful that the God we serve will never run into complications. He's all-powerful, all-knowing. He's always going from where he's coming, and there is nothing that can stop him from getting the promises back to me I believe it like this that God's promises they are so sure it's almost like a billionaire with his checkbook baby if a billionaire pull out his checkbook and write you a check you can take that to the bank when God gives you a promise you ought to tell your neighbor you can take that to the bank it ain't it ain't gonna bounce it, it, it's not gonna bounce it's not gonna get rejected because God made it he has enough in the account to cover the charge if he makes a promise he is able to bring it to pass Paul would tell them that where the spirit of the Lord is, oh, right here while I feel is. this thing. And, and so what happens is that God lets us know through the writing of Job that there's a fence around every believer. Some of y'all don't believe that there's a fence around you. You don't, you don't believe that it could be worse than what it was, but there was a fence around you. When you lost control of the car and should have lost your life, there was a fence around you. When they had that gun leveled off at your face, there was a fence around you. When they were gathered together, getting ready to take you out, there was a fence around you there's there's a fence there's a there's an invisible fence but there's a fence around you how, how do you know it how do you know it young preacher in the book of psalms uh, 34 of you just indulge me please psalms 34 and 7 it says that the angel of the lord he encamped about the, the righteous in other words uh, there's angels that are assigned to you and they don't leave you they sleep with you y'all ain't gonna when you lay down your angels lay down with you when you wake up your angel wake up with you you don't even know it there's so many angels in here right now because you got your angel and i got my angel and we got our y'all ain't gonna talk back to me in here you you can't even see it when i say high five your neighbor your angel high fiving my angel saying young jones is preaching you won't even say it but your angel saying preach young jones you won't even give me an amen but your angel is saying you better preach it like you feel somebody shout then it's encamped about me i got protection it's all it's all around me Y'all Yo, have your seats here. I don't want to, I don't want to get you jumping too soon. Tell you, I want to, I want to get back to my text. I don't want to, I want to mislead anybody. Let me get back to my text here. So if a messenger of Satan is bringing a thorn to Paul, only way he could get in God had to leave the gate open. What has happened to some of us is that we don't realize that God has left the gate open. Y'all don't mind me talking for a little while, do you? See, when God leaves the gate open, you go through emotional changes. <laughs> uh huh. Y'all, oh, I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm already out here. It, it, ain't even your 30 day time and you're going through I'm talking about when your gate is open y'all ain't gonna, ain't gonna talk back when the gate is open men have one day a month when the gate is open we, we go through emotional changes when the gate is open y'all ain't gonna talk like I won't I don't know if we need to run to the store and get a pad or what but we go through emotional changes when the gate is open Joe Joe said it best Job said, when my gate was left open, Job said, I had days. Job said, when God left the gate open, he said, I had days. I didn't understand what God was doing. I had days I prayed and it seemed like there was no answer. I had days that I felt like God was my enemy. Any, anybody gonna tell the truth in here? You ever felt like God was against you? You ever felt like every door you tried to walk in, he closed? There were days when my gate was open. Job, Job said I had days where I wish I never would have been born. He had days where I wish I would have been born a still born baby. Because his gate, you don't have your seats here. His gate was open. What do you see, Young Jones? Is that when God leaves the gate open, he leaves the gate open for the enemy to test you. He leaves the gate open so you can really understand if your faith is real faith. Untested faith ain't sure faith. 
You don't know how sure your faith is until your faith's been tested. So he leaves the door open to find out if you really believe in prayer. Do you really believe in that name, Jesus? Do you really believe that God can work it out anyway? Do you really believe that God will do it just for you? Your gate's been open. I can't talk like I want to. It ain't because I come to encourage somebody. It's not because you made a bad decision. It's not because God don't love you or like you. It's because God is trying you. Somebody shout, I'm being tried by the fire and I shall come forth. It's pure gold. If I preach right now, y'all ain't going to get finished. The other reason that God leaves the gate open is to keep you and I humble. There is nothing that runs you closer and faster to God like an attack from the enemy. Y'all pray for me. A, a, a good attack from the enemy on your baby. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me in here. You wasn't even that serious about salvation until the enemy touched your household. Now all of a sudden, now you, you praying like you're a little baby priest or something. Y'all ain't gonna talk. There, there are some of you here this morning because the enemy has attacked you. Y'all ain't gonna talk back. God left the gate open to run you back home. I can't talk. Somebody shout it. It'll humble you. It'll keep you dependent upon God. And sought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Paul, the apostle Paul, established churches. He's been through things. He stood for the gospel. This man was so anointed one time and he was preaching. A man named Eutychus fell out of the window and broke his neck. The apostle Paul goes down and prays the boy back to life. We're talking about the apostle Paul here. He knows God and God knows him. He hears the apostle Paul's prayer. But Paul say, I had to pray three times what do you see young Jones is that Paul not only prayed three times but the Bible says that he besought the Lord that, that, that word besought means that he pleaded with God you, you ever been in a place in your life where you were just pleading with God to make it better you were just urging God to Lord I can't take no more I need you to make it like Paul said I've been there three times I was begging God you ever beg God to let you out you ever you ever beg to be brought out of the fire you ever you ever beg for break you ever beg just for a little bit of peace you ever beg for somebody to love you the way that you love them you ever beg God Paul Paul said I've been there he said I beg God three times <laughs> Holy Ghost help me preach this thing he urges and he pleads and he begs God to take it away. But the request was denied. <laughs> what do you do? When you feel that you've taken all that you can and God denies your request. Yo, yo. See, see, it's one thing for the bank to deny you. But when God denies you, the one that said you can ask what you will but for this he says no y'all you know what what do I do preacher when my request is denied what do I do young preacher when I ask God for something and his response don't agree with me <laughs> what do I do young preacher when God stopped being the genie in the bottle, what do I do? When God stopped working tricks in my life, what do I do? Somebody shout, what do I do? Young preacher, when my access is denied, what do I do? When my request is denied, what do I do? When I feel like if one more thing go wrong, I'm going to lose my mind. And God tells me to stay right there. What, what do I do? Young preacher, I wish I had some good news for you, but I don't. Just in case Paul wasn't big enough. Just in case Paul Bridges wasn't big enough. Just in case Paul's title wasn't big enough. There's another man by the name of Jesus. He's sitting down in the Garden of Gethsemane getting ready to face the cross. The greatest trial he's ever faced before in his life. And he got so emotional. Y'all ain't gonna let me preach in here. Till he gets on his knees and he says, Lord, if it be possible, take this cup away from me. But his request was denied. Oh. What do I do, Jones, when I don't want to suffer anymore? What do I do when I'm tired of going through? And God says, no. I feel like preaching. Y'all pray for me here. I got one more thing to tell you. And I'm going to try to get on out y'all way, Mike, but I feel good while I'm preaching. 
See, as a natural father, yeah. as a natural parent, there's sometimes your child come to you and your child has a request. Yeah. But the thing that they're requesting is not good for them. Yeah. So as a natural parent, you will deny their request. Yeah. They may cry when you deny it. But you're not denying it to hurt them. You're denying it to help them. Y'all ain't gonna... Y'all, y'all, y'all missed that one. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed, y'all, 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 y'all missed, y'all missed that one. What, what are you saying, young Jones? Uh, that God's no is really a yes. His no is not to hurt you. His no is that he knows the situation you're in now is going to bless you. Y'all, y'all ought to tell your neighbor, it might be painful, it might be ugly, but I declare God is going to get the glory out of your situation. It's going to bless you more. Feel. Say, neighbor, God ain't trying to hurt you. He's just trying to help you. That's all. He's he just trying to help you here. That's all he want to do. He just want to help you. So the apostle Paul, he gets to the place where God tells him no. He gets to the place where he's besought the Lord three times. And the Bible says in verse number nine that God begins to talk back to Paul. And he says that my grace is sufficient for you. Tell your neighbor God's grace. It is sufficient for you. I don't care what you're going through and I don't care what you're facing. Maybe God is saying, I'm not going to deliver you now. you got to suffer a little while longer but he told Paul that my grace is sufficient I dare you to turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I know you got favor on your life but you need a little bit of grace to make it so I found out that favor can lend you the job but it's the grace that'll cause you to keep your sanity can I preach like I feel y'all because I got the grace in my life and because you got grace in your life you ain't blew your brains out by now see the only reason you're still here with the trial that you're in with the trouble that you're facing with the struggles that you face uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, is that the grace of God uh, it is on your side uh, the only reason you can still praise uh, is because of the grace uh, the only reason you can still smile uh, is because of the grace uh, and I dare somebody uh, that's feeling a little weak in your spirit uh, to say Lord give me some more grace uh, I need the grace uh, to be able to make it uh, the Hebrew writer said uh, he said we can boldly come uh, before the throne of grace uh, and find mercy uh, and obtain grace uh, in the time of need huh? is there anybody here huh? you're going through a struggle huh? and you need the grace of God huh? you're saying God if you ain't gonna move it huh? then give me strength to take it huh? God if you ain't gonna move it huh? then give me strength to bear it huh? if you ain't gonna move it huh? give me strength to hope my grace is sufficient huh? and my strength is made perfect huh? in your weakness huh? you don't never see God's strength huh? until you get weak huh? you can't even see his hand huh? until you get weak huh? you don't know he's a way maker huh? until you get weak huh? what are you saying young Jones huh? I'm about to shout because I'm weak huh? I'm about to praise because I'm weak huh? because when I'm weak huh? somebody shout he is strong huh? when I am weak huh? God is about to show up and show out huh? turn to your neighbor huh? and say grace is on the way huh? so Paul said it like this huh? he said because I got the grace huh? and the grace is all I need huh? he said I got some news for y'all huh? he said I'm not gonna glory huh? in the material huh? I'm not going to glory huh? because of the house I stay in. Huh? I'm not going to glory huh? because of the car that I can drive. Huh? I'm not going to glory huh? because of my job. Huh? But I'm going to glory huh? because of my pain. Huh? Is there somebody here huh? that can give God glory? Huh? Not for the pleasure, huh? but for your pain. Huh? Can you give God glory huh? for every down day? Huh? Can you give God glory huh? for every ugly day? Huh? Can you give God glory huh? for everything you did? understand huh? I dare you to turn to a neighbor huh? and say I'm about to give him glory huh? I don't know what you're gonna do huh? but I got to give him glory huh? you see I ain't been perfect huh? I ain't made all the right decisions huh? I made some mistakes huh? I've been dirty some days huh? but I got to give him glory huh? I'm looking for the believer huh? that I shout God huh? I got to give you glory huh? can I preach like I feel y'all huh? I'm about to go home huh? because when you give God the glory huh? the psalmist said huh? I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continue to be within my mouth do I have an all time praise where my praise is at those that are giving glory those that are giving honor and so Paul is saying he said now once I give him glory he said now the power of Christ he said it's going to rest on me I dare somebody to throw your head back like you doing the preaching and say Lord let your power let it rest on me I don't want it to 
move and go. Huh? I don't want it to go and stay. Huh? But I need your power huh? to rest on me. Huh? I need your power huh? to stay on me. Huh? I need your power huh? to be in me. Huh? Because without your power, huh? Lord, I ain't gonna make it. Huh? Without your power, huh? I'll go crazy. Huh? Without your power, huh? I'm gonna leave my husband. Huh? Without your power, huh? I'm gonna walk away from my marriage. Huh? Without your power, huh? shout power, huh? shout power, huh? shout power, huh? shout power. Huh? I'm about to go home, huh? but I got one more verse, huh? and I feel like preaching in here. Turn to your neighbor huh? and say, neighbor, huh? he feel like preaching. Huh? Can I preach like I feel? Huh? In verse number 10, huh? the apostle Paul says, huh? he say, for when I am weak, huh? he says, then I'm strong. Huh? What you say, Paul? Huh? He say, when I'm weak, huh? he say, then I'm strong. Huh? You're talking about the same person. Huh? He says, I'm weak. Huh? He say, but then I'm strong. Huh? What does Paul do, young Jones? Huh? He gives us a paradox. Huh? See, the paradoxal huh? of the paradox huh? is that he's weak huh? and he's strong. Huh? I dare you to tell your neighbor, huh? you got a paradox. Huh? If you are a believer, huh? what is the paradox, Jones? Huh? For those that love God, huh? that even when we're down, huh? baby, we're up. Huh? When we should be worried, huh? we still got peace. Huh? When we should be crying, huh? we still got joy. Huh? When we are weak, huh? somebody shout, I'm strong. Huh? Tell your neighbor, huh? you're stronger than what you think. Huh? You're stronger than what you know. Huh? God is in you. Huh? Power is in you. Huh? Shout, I got power. Huh? I got power. Huh? I got power. Huh? I got power. Huh? You will survive. Huh? You got to survive. Huh? You got to make it. Huh? Not because I said so, huh? but God said so. Huh? Grab your neighbor huh? and say, neighbor, huh? you got to make it. Huh? You got to got to huh? out of this trial. Huh? You got to got to huh? keep on pushing. Huh? You got to got to huh? keep on praying. Huh? You got to got to huh? keep on praising. Huh? Shout, I got to do it. Huh? 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 I got to praise. Huh? I got to shout. Huh? I got to dance. Huh? I got to love. Huh? I got to shout victory. Huh? Shout victory. Huh? Shout victory. Huh? Victory. Huh? It shall be mine. Huh? Victory. Huh? It's already mine. Huh? Shout Zion. Huh? Shout Zion. Huh? Shout Zion. Huh? You got to shout it huh? to the devil turn you loose. Huh? You got to shout it huh? to the Holy Ghost move. Huh? You got to shout it. Huh? You got to shout it. Huh? Dig down deep. Huh? Forget about your neighbor. Huh? Get your mind on God. Huh? And shout, huh? 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 shout, hu